ladies and gentlemen, to Fan Appreciation Month here on Reaction and Review. Tonight, guys, I'm checking out a sci-fi film from 2000. That movie is G. Savior. Now, I'm going to tell you guys, I don't know a whole lot about this movie, but I am going to itemize for you everything that I do know. Number one, I know that this is a live-action Gundam movie. And I know that there's not a whole lot of those out there. In fact, this might very well be the only live-action Gundam film made. I'm not totally sure. Number two, you would almost expect a Gundam film to be made by a Japanese studio. Instead, the uh, creators of Gundam, uh, which was an animation studio called Sunrise, decided to farm this movie out to a Canadian film studio. So we have a decidedly Japanese product being made by a Canadian film studio. Something about that just sounds sort of odd to me, alright? Number three, I know this movie was made to celebrate the 20th anniversary of the Gundam franchise. Alright, that's totally cool. And uh, number four, I know absolutely jack shit about most of the Gundam franchise. All of my knowledge of Gundam uh, sort of starts and ends with Mobile Fighter G Gundam, and I know that G Gundam has absolutely fuck all to do with the rest of the Gundam franchise. So... I'm going into this sucker almost totally ignorant of the rest of the Gundam history, barring a couple of names of shows and characters and all that shit. I'm certainly hoping that I'm not going to need an encyclopedic knowledge of Gundam for this movie to be any good. However, uh, I honestly am just wondering if the movie's going to be good at all. And the only way I'm going to find that out is if I shut up and I push play, and I'm going to do that right now. So, without further ado, it's time to kick back, relax, and check out G-Savior. You know, guys, I'm gonna say this right now. Our story so far is kind of fascinating, but holy shit, our dialogue just sucks. And the acting is just a little bit lifeless. I'm certainly hoping that it gets better as the film goes on. I'm also certainly hoping that, uh, just I'm also certainly hoping that we actually get to see a Gundam in action in this fucking Gundam movie at some point. But I guess I'm just going to have to wait and see if either of those are going to happen. You know, guys, I think I figured out what would make this movie a little bit, a little bit better. Perhaps maybe if our villains had a justifiable reason to be evil. Unfortunately, though... Uh, our villains here, which is, I guess, which I guess is the, con which I guess is the Congressionals, they have no reason to be evil. Literally, guys, like every, now, like every single questionable evil action which, which they do, they literally do just because. They do it because fuck you, that's, you know, why? I can't take villains seriously, especially in something which is supposed to be like a political thriller of sorts when they don't have a fucking justifiable reason for it. It just comes off as kind of lazy and kind of shit. I'm kind of hoping that we, at some point, are, you know, greeted with some kind of fucking justification. Once more, I'd also like to actually see some Gundams in action instead of just Gundams walking around or just, you know, like, mobile fucking suits just lying fucking stationary. I would like to see some Gundam action in my Gundam movie. I guess maybe that's asking a little bit too much. It's kind of strange, guys. I can't help but notice just how cheap every one of these sets looks. I probably wouldn't be focused on that if the story would actually would actually stop dragging its feet and fucking go somewhere. I'd probably not notice that if maybe we had dialogue that was worth listening to or actors who cared. But no, I'm just noticing that the sets are painfully cheap and the CG by 2000 standards is ridiculously shit. I really wish, guys, that I didn't notice that kind of shit, but the movie's giving me literally nothing else to focus on. It's pretty sad, guys. I, I was saying earlier how I really wanted some Gundam action in my fucking Gundam movie. I think I now know why they were holding back until, until the end. The CG in this is so awful that when you're forced to look at it for extended periods, periods of time, you just notice every flaw and every failing in this. And this thing had a $10 million budget. I'm wondering where the fuck the money, the money went. It sure as shit didn't go to the CG, because this CG is pathetically terrible. 
Well, guys, that was G Savior. Let me shut that off. Good God Almighty. Um, you know, maybe, perhaps, maybe this is just me, but I, I thought maybe, because this movie was supposed to celebrate the 20th anniversary of the Gundam franchise. I guess I was expecting something better. I guess I was expecting some massive, massive powerhouse movie that was going to be a love letter to all things Gundam. I don't think that is what we got. Again, I don't have a whole lot of knowledge of the Gundam franchise in general, so maybe, maybe, maybe perhaps everything that I haven't seen is just boring, poorly fucking written horse shit, but uh, I'm going to just assume that that is not the case. Let's start with the writing, because this, because this movie's trying desperately hard to be, in some ways, a, a political thriller. The problem with it is that the writers don't know how to write tension, and they don't know how to make a political thriller work. When I say that, what I mean is, we have no real reason to side with anyone here, besides the fact that almost all of our characters are lifeless as shit. I am talking painfully lifeless characters. I can barely remember the names of any of them, and I just finished watching the fucking movie, all right? Because almost none of them have any real fucking personality to speak of. You basically are either part of the Congress of Settlement Nations, uh, which apparently, uh, if, if, if any of the signage for Congress is to go by, uh, somehow Congress of Settlement Nations shortens down to, it shortens down to consent. You never hear anyone actually refer to it as that, but that's how all their fucking signage is written up. So it is consent... Uh, threatening to go to war with the one lone settlement nation that doesn't want to join them, and that is the settlement of Gaia. Uh, so, so essentially, so essentially, con so essentially, consent makes anything that Gaia does sound like some act of terrorism. Because why not? And and uh, and up until the final act, as far as, as as far as anyone knows. Every single one of these lives are being cooked up by one lone, by one lone consent officer, you know, who's basically just stringing along his fucking CO. It's not until the final act when the CO's like, yep, evil now, ha 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 ha, and, you know, you really don't give a shit at that, at that point. The movie is that boring, you know, but, you see, I probably would have liked it better if we were given any reason for any of this fucking tension. But no, do, 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 do you guys know what the real conflict is here? It seriously, guys, is not even the war between Gaia and the rest of the settlements. No, it's over a tube of glowing liquid. All right, they keep on talking about they keep on talking about bio fucking luminescence, which is when things like say like fish glow under fucking water. Except it's except it's a glow that does not generate heat. So they were trying to find a way of creating some kind of a thermal bio, some kind of a thermal bioluminescence that would also generate heat, and they'd use it underwater for agricultural purposes, apparently. So the whole thing is over a test tube about as big as this pen, which is full of this thermal bio, this thermal bioluminescent fluid. The problem is, they keep on talking about how it generates heat, and how it's supposed to generate enough heat to actually grow crops. Now, if we're talking under fucking water, and we are talking at, like, the bottom of the ocean, that shit would have to be red hot to the fucking touch in order for it to do anything. But people can handle the frickin' tube as if it, as if there's no heat coming off of it at all. I understand that the move, I, I, I understand it spends most of the movie in some kind of, like, a steel or potentially a lead-lined case, but that actually makes matters even worse worse because if that thing is sitting in a metal case that means then the heat would then would then warm up the metal you'd never be able to handle that fucking tube so that means that it obviously is not generating enough heat to really do anything which means that this whole thing is being fought over nothing because there's no fucking justifiable reason to go oh well it well it actually is generating heat it's just that in universal century 223 everybody's got a everyone's able to hold on to ultra hot shit and it doesn't and it doesn't impact them. You know what? I would have happily had that as some kind of a fucking explanation. Anything as to why people can just handle this fucking tube as if it as if it has no heat coming off it at all. Any kind of justification would have been fine. Instead, we get nothing. We just get, "Oh, 
oh, you know, it's totally hot. Just trust us, trust us. It's totally fucking generating enough heat where if we were to dump it at the bottom of the ocean, it can totally generate enough heat to grow crops under, you know, water. Promise. Uh... <laughs> But yeah, that though, guys, is like the problem. Nothing ever gets a fucking, nothing gets a proper explanation. Like, nobody honestly knows why anybody does anything, and the movie is tight fucking lipped as to why. So not only do we have characters who are lifeless as shit, we have a conflict that makes almost no sense, because nobody bothers to explain why the fuck anything is going on. There is literally no fucking reason for both sides to not come together and create this, oh, except in the final act, once more when commanding officer, I'm suddenly fucking evil, decides to essentially announce that the reason why they need this, they, they need this is because, is because the only, because the only way to properly dominate, dominate the settlements, you need to be able to, you need to be able to control the problem of global, global and I guess settlement-wide famine, which is hitting everybody. So if you have, so if you have this thermal thermo you have this thermal bioluminescent fuel or fluid then and then you don't use it then you have all the power in the world to tell people how much and when they are going to eat it's kind of sort of a flimsy thing and again it came right out of left field in the final act with literally no justification or reasoning to even think that was how that was going going to fly guys the writing here is flimsy as fuck straight up the writing is flimsy boring and shit. I have seen a lot of I've seen a lot of political thrillers in my fucking lifetime. This thing is probably the worst because every other one at least took the fucking effort to make you care about the characters, make you care about the conflict, make you know what the fuck the conflict is actually over. You know, without them dumping it all in the final act going, "Oh, it's all this because fuck you." No. No, no, that is not how you write this shit. So, you know, I could probably have looked past some of that. I could probably have looked at it as just a nice little popcorn action flick if the acting was maybe was, was maybe any fucking good. But no, the acting here is terrible. Uh, the acting here is so piss is so piss poor it almost hurts. Nobody here seems to be fucking trying. We have certain actors who seem to be putting on some kind of a weird accent, which doesn't totally work with anything else because they're the only character who carries that that accent. So you'll have people who sound kind of sort of who count who sound kind of sort of Mexican because why not? You'll have a couple of them who sound painfully painfully Canadian. Well, that makes sense. It was made in, it was made in fucking Canada, but it just sort of seems weird, especially when you have like a father and his daughter. The daughter has no accent to speak of. The father kind of sounds like he's trying to pull off something like maybe he's trying to sound like he's maybe trying to sound like Matt and he's trying to sound like Nelson Mandela maybe but failing miserably at it you know it, you know it just doesn't sound right to me and that really seemed to be the most that anybody was trying for was they were shooting for accents and fucking them up royally there was no fucking attempt to actually get um, any feeling out as they as, as, as they were acting and it really just makes all the faults and failings in, in the writing pop out even more because, because, because if you don't care about the characters because, because, because of how they're written, and the actors are certainly not fucking trying, then you're going to notice the problems with the, with, with the writing even more, which means you're going to give even less of a shit about these characters if that was even possible. So, the acting here was a major misstep. CG. Here is where the biggest problem is. Um, because guys... I may not be very well versed in the world of Gundam, but I know one thing. Gundams, as well as all other all other mobile suits in general, are known for having some vivid fucking colors. Unless you are like some default like grunt fucking mobile mobile suit and you're in whatever kind of fashionable fucking color of gray of gray or green is given to you every other every other mobile suit and certainly every goddamn gundam has bright vivid colors on their paint scheme and the and the main character's gundam in almost every series has got the same kind of red white red white blue with a little with, with, with a little hint of yellow paint job and you can kind of make it out on the cover you can make it out even less in the film in the film itself. 
Why? Because the CG looks like shit, and everything is rendered in these dull, muted fucking colors. So you will see mobile suits where I'm going to assume it was supposed to be red, it looks pink, it's, it was supposed to be like greenish, it looks a little bit more like a rust color, or maybe almost like a goldish sort of a color. But you can barely tell because it all because it all kind of bleeds in and it and it all and it all kind of looks like it's all being painted over this dingy, nasty gray color. And that is not just Gaia's mobile suits and Gaia's one lone Gundam, you know, because they are you know the ones who are sort of behind the eight ball in terms of tech. This also has to do with this also has to do with the actual mobile suits and Gundams which are used by the fucking military. Even those things look dingy and nasty and poorly fucking colored. Now, I was curious, guys, because um, my knowledge of 2000s era C, fucking like CG, is not that is not that well known, and I thought maybe perhaps CG around 2000 uh, looked kind of sort of like a late fucking Saturn, early PlayStation cutscene. So I did a little bit of digging, and I found Babylon 5, which was made two years before this fucking movie was made which had bright, vivid CG, looked fucking amazing. Every episode was made for a tenth the budget of this piece of shit. Guys, that honestly is what floors me. Is I was so bored with this, I was looking up the budget of Babylon 5's episodes because I just wanted to know. Babylon 5 was made for $800,000 per episode, and the CG in that looked fucking phenomenal in comparison. This piece of shit... Ten million dollars, and I don't see us. I don't see nearly ten million on that fucking screen. I see at best, considering the CG, the sets. I'm going to cover sets and props and shit in a sec. Maybe two million at best. Where the hell did the other eight million dollars go? I'm rather curious. So yeah, guys, our CG looks horrible. Looks even worse when you stack it up to other things that came out around that time period with smaller fucking budgets. My God, that is just terrifying. Um, it also doesn't help that our Gundams, they don't seem to have any kind of natural natural movement. They seem to come off incredibly jerky and clunky, as if perhaps maybe they were done with, like, stop motion. And a problem that I haven't seen since I covered fucking, covered fucking Gladiformers, there is no weight on any of these fucking mobile suits or any of these fucking Gundams. None. So as so as they are moving around in space, I totally understand that there is like limited fucking gravity in space, but shit still has weight. You know, all of them are moving around as if there's literally no weight to them. So when they hit something, it looks kind of lazy and shit because they didn't bother to animate it to actually put weight behind any be, be, behind any of the swings or behind any of the landings. It really just makes the whole thing look cheap and shit. Now, speaking of cheap and shit, we now get to touch on the sets, which essentially look like they just took a fucking warehouse somewhere and covered it and covered it all, covered it, covered all of it in drapes and went, boom, Gaia, we are all set, this is the settlement of Gaia. Or just, you know, or just go, or just go and remove all of, all of the drapes and go, hey, now it's a, now it's a fucking, now it's a fucking oil fucking rig. The whole thing, guys, literally looks like it was shot on a single sound soundstage, and they did little, if anything, to change how the sets look. So everything looks ridiculously samey from, from setting, from fucking setting to setting. The only thing that might stand out is costumes, but the costumes all happen to look like they were whipped up for about 50, for maybe about 50 fucking dollars a costume, which is pretty fucking sad when you really think about it. Uh, guys, this whole thing looks as if it was cutting costs everywhere in terms of sets and costumes and everything else. Which doesn't make a lick of sense because, once more, $10 million budget. $10 million budget and you are cutting corners as if you have a fifth of that fucking budget. My God. I am really curious where the hell the rest of the fucking budget, you know, went, guys. Because it obviously did not go to writing. It, did, it didn't go to acting. It sure is fuck did not go to CG. It did, it did not go to the horrible looking sets or the cheap looking costumes or the shitty looking cockpit set that literally every single actor has to share because apparently, guys, mobile suit cockpits are identical to Gundam cockpits, which makes me wonder, what the fuck's the difference then? Because I've talked to Gundam fans in the past, and if you get a mobile suit, just a general mobile suit and a Gundam confused, 
they will lose their shit. But considering the fact that in this movie both mobile suits and Gundams share the exact same kind of cockpit, what's the motherfucking difference? Now, perhaps maybe there is a difference in the proper Gundam shows. I don't know. I've never I've never seen any of them outside of fucking G fucking Gundam and their cockpits were different. Let's just put it that way. Um so yeah, they were so they were cutting costs everywhere here. Which just sort of makes me again ponder about the budget. All right, I will say though, uh, in terms of CG, what I what I did like is there is one thing almost every major Gundam is known for, and that is having one of those colossal fucking shields, which is basically like sticks onto its arm. And our title and our title Gundam here, our G Savior Gundam does not have a proper physical shield. Instead, it has a laser shield, which takes on the same shape and looks very similar. I did totally like that. I thought that was a nice touch. Unfortunately, uh, that's really, guys, about the only positive I can grant this thing in terms of CG or pretty much anything else. This movie is a horrendous waste of time. Can I recommend G. Savior? Myself, no. Um... I could possibly recommend it to longtime Gundam fans. However, I don't know how loyal this is to how every other Gundam, Gundam show is. I do know that I have a couple of friends who are diehard fans of who are diehard fans of the Gundam franchise. When I asked them about this, a couple of them had no idea this thing this thing even fucking existed, and a few others said we do not fucking talk about it, and then they never elaborated as to why. Which probably tells me that even fans of the Gundam property think this thing is a piece of shit. Which is totally fine. I can totally understand that because, yeah, this here is a giant turd. Um, I was expecting so much better, guys. I was expecting at least an interesting action movie. I could not get that. When I noticed that they were trying to have inklings of a fucking political thriller, I was expecting at least a decent political thriller. Uh, no, there was nothing even close to a decent political thriller in this fucking movie. This thing does not know what it wants to be. It doesn't know if it wants to be an action film. It doesn't know if it wants to be a political thriller. It doesn't know if it, it doesn't know what the fuck it wants to really be. And because it's wearing so many fucking hats, it just looks homely as shit, and it just it feel it feels kind of, sort of like it has a bit of a personality complex. Now, mind you guys, the last time I saw a movie that was trying to keep this that was trying to keep a bunch of different balls in the air was Captain America: The Winter Soldier, which is trying to balance being a general superhero film, a general action film, and a political thriller, and that made it fucking work because the writers knew what the fuck they were doing. The writers were competent enough to actually churn up a story that fucking worked. They couldn't do it here. And because of that, G-Savior fails, and it fails miserably. Jesus H. Now, because it's Fan Appreciation Month, G-Savior came off the Amazon wish list. The person who sent it in was Fuchsia. Uh, as far as I know, Fuchsia does not have a YouTube channel that... Uh, I'm going to assume that is a she. Again, if I'm... Again, if... if now, if I'm wrong, please correct me. Um... As far as I know, Fuchsia does not have, does not want me to promote like a YouTube channel or anything else, which is totally cool. Fuchsia, still, I thank you. I was kind of curious about this. I wanted to know if this movie was any good. I wanted to know if this was a good representation of the Gundam franchise. I certainly hope it's not a good representation of the Gundam franchise, because if the rest of the franchise is this shit, like if the regular Gundam shows, I'm talking like... I'm talking like uh, I'm talking like Mobile Suit Gundam and Gundam Wing and all the others are as shitty as this. Then I'm kind of curious how the fuck this franchise made it to a 20th anniversary and is now bearing down on a 35th. Actually, no, last year was their 35th anniversary, and they're still going. So if so, if the rest of the Gundam franchise is as shitty as this, it makes me ponder exactly how the hell it made it this long. But hey. Again, I have no idea. And Fuchsia, I do want to thank you. I, again, I was curious about this movie specifically. Would have been nice if the movie was good. But hey, that honestly is sort of the joy of... That, that is the joy of reaction and review. Is I have no fucking clue if these movies are going to be good when I, when, 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 I, when I throw them in. I sometimes am pleasantly surprised. And other times, well... 
I get dog shit. And I wouldn't have found that out, Fuchsia, if it was not for you. I thank you. You're fucking awesome. Now, I mentioned that the only Gundam series I've seen is Mobile Fighter G Gundam. I do have that entire series on DVD. I think I'm going to go watch some of that because, God damn it, I came into this wanting to watch Gundam. I wanted to watch something interesting involving Gundams. God damn it, I'm going to go watch something interesting involving fucking Gundams. Anyway, guys, that is going to do it for this installment of Reaction and Review. Until next time, ladies and gentlemen, take care, and I will see you all in the near future. Peace.